podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being. Being well. Some of the topics are addiction, fear, faith, self-compassion, relationships, codependency, emotional intelligence, and more. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. easy to let anger become a habit, and then it becomes an addiction that delivers a powerful rush of hormones that are hard to resist. Over time, chronic anger will poison your body, your mind, and your relationships with other people and the world around you, says Terry Earl Clayton. In this episode, Terry talks about how to control anger by using simple techniques, also how to understand your emotions and free yourself from anger. Terry Earl Clayton is a writer, psychologist, and educator. He has a Master of Science degree in Cognitive Psychology, and it is a certified Cognitive Behavior Therapist. Tara's current research and writing interests include anger management, productive aging, language learning, and the psychology of writing. Here is the interview with Terry Earl Clayton. In your own words, who is Terry E. Clayton? Well, uh, Terry E. Clayton is a very curious guy, always has been and um, hopes to remain so. Uh, my curiosity has led me in many different directions. And for the longest time, I, I thought I was a, a dilettante, a job hopper, but it turns out that I've been having a nonlinear career, which is the phrase that's popular. So I continue my nonlinear career exploring um, things of interest to me. Wonderful, thank you. My first question to you is, how do you define anger? Uh, anger is an emotion that stems from uh, a very ancient piece of wiring in our brain that was designed to protect us from, from physical threat. Uh, anger is uh, it's a rush of, of hormones uh, that, that prepares you for fight or flight. Which, if you're if you're you know living in in a in that kind of situation, is very useful. But in modern society, uh, it it doesn't do much good. It it causes you to to respond uh, very immediately uh, with great vigor and and seldom with uh, with any thought. Right. What is your experience? Let me rephrase that. What is your personal experience with anger? Okay. Um, I, spent, I spent many, many years uh, being angry. Uh, the, the, the root of the anger I eventually uncovered, but, but um, I, I can't actually pinpoint when I started to respond to situations with anger. Uh, but once I did, it became self-reinforcing. And, um, and it became my, my, my first response to any situation that, that frustrated me or annoyed me. Uh, and I, I, I missed opportunities because I, I spent so much time being angry. Uh, I lost a lot of friends. 
Uh, it damaged my relationships with uh, with with colleagues and and with loved ones. Uh, I was never I was never physically aggressive with anyone, but um, you know I did a lot of shouting and kicking of doors and throwing of things, and and it was just just I basically I just got I I got tired of being angry all the time, uh, which is what led me to write the book. The book was the book was a form of self therapy. Right, it makes sense. Can you talk to us about the cause of your anger? Yeah, in my case, in my case, anger was a defense mechanism for for a feeling of of um, uh, low self worth, low self esteem, which which stems back to my childhood. Um, something you know about from from uh, your book, um, Fit Joy. Right. Oh, yeah. And a lot of a lot of our adult problems happens to us in childhood. So, so as a child, I had I had uh, some unfortunate experiences that that caused me to feel uh, low self esteem, and I was using anger to to cover up for that, which is which is fairly common actually. Are you freed from anger today? I would say yes. Uh, that that doesn't mean uh, that doesn't mean I I still don't get frustrated. It doesn't mean I I still don't get annoyed by things. Um, there's there's so much that can cause us to be frustrated and annoyed. But the difference is is that I I I no longer allow my my um, my my frustration or my annoyance to to boil over into anger. I, I've I've put the lid on it. So, so yes, I would say I'm free from anger. Wonderful. That's yeah. so great, Terry. <laughs> It's a great relief. I'm actually, I'm actually, one of the things that surprised me about Terry uh, is, is that you, you did not become an angry person. I mean, you had, you had, you had ample cause. I mean, it would have been not, it would have not been surprising at all if you had become an angry person, right. but, but you, you didn't. How do you, how do you explain that? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. It might be, you know, some people we talk about the nature of life, the nature of things, the nature of the human beings. Maybe that's just the nature of some people. They don't, you know, they, I don't know, Terry. Yeah, that's yeah. Mis just yeah. a mystery. I don't know. I actually love my nature. <laughs> It's kind of joyful. It, <laughs> I like it. I, that's funny. Like I like myself, <laughs> but it's the truth. Uh, um, so, well, that's good goal for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. To like oneself. Right. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Right. In your book, free yourself from anger, a do yourself manual for anger junkies. You wrote anger. Mm. It's often mm. a symptom of clinical depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, substance abuse, and other psychological disorders. So my question is, how do we know the difference between anger mm -hmm. as a consequence of a clinical mental disorder and a reaction to fear or low self-esteem or need for control? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. It's, it's sometimes difficult. Um, sudden, angst, sudden onset anger, if... if, if uh, Or, or, or out of character anger. Uh, so, so you know, you've been, you've been, a, and you, yeah, you get frustrated, and you, you know, sometimes you get a little, you get a little hot under the collar, uh, and then suddenly you're, you're throwing things across the room and shouting at people and ranting, and uh, that, that kind of sudden onset anger is often a symptom of, of, of a deeper underlying uh, problem, uh, neurological or, or psychological. Um, Uh, if, if, uh, if you just, you know, if you're, if you're changing some fundamental habits, like, you know, you're trying to quit, uh, coffee or alcohol or smoking, uh, you're going to be extra irritable, uh, and, and, and more touchy and, and easier to, you know, to have an outburst of anger, uh, which, which will pass as you get a grip on, on the habit you're trying to break. Um, It's it's not always easy to to discern the difference between anger as a as a habit that you have allowed to develop and and some underlying causes. But um, uh, if 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 anger is something that that come that sudden onset like like you know oh you know gosh uh, Valeria used to be so 
so so calm and now she's you know bursting out in anger all the time um that that would be that would be a sign that that uh, maybe you should go get checked out for some underlying cause right that makes a lot of sense yeah i know you talk about anger as a habit mm. or mm. even an addiction mm. how does somebody know like when anger has become a habit or an addiction well this is this is a bit of a problem because mm -hmm. because as as with most addictions the last person to to realize that they have a problem is the is the addict and and that's true with alcohol and drugs and, and any other any other form of addiction so um um what was the question <laughs> How do we know the difference between like being addicted to anger or it has become a habit? Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes, sometimes people will tell you, uh, but that's that's not often the case because you can't really you can't really talk to an angry person. Um, it's, in my case, I just I just I just got tired of being angry all the time. You know, and and uh, and I realized I, I I was traveling a lot for work at the time, and and one of my particular uh, anger points was airport security. I, I used to get absolutely in a raid through airport security. Oh, terrible! What a terrible uh, uh, infri infringement of my my personal rights, and uh, you know how useless this is and what a time wasting inconvenience and 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 on and on and on um and and i realized that if i kept if i kept on that track uh to end up in in the, the room with no windows in the back somewhere uh you know getting getting the the full body cavity search and then dumped out on the sidewalk and missed my flight um, and, and, and I, I really had to get a grip on this. Otherwise, um, it was going to have some very bad consequences. Uh, and that, that's what, that's what finally for me, um, led me to, to, to begin my journey, uh, back from, from anger as, as a habit. So in the way, what it is, um, is the way we think if we have this pattern of thinking and thoughts will become emotions and then the emotions will control us depending on how much we have been practicing, right? Or following our thoughts. That's exactly, that's exactly how it goes. Your, uh, your thoughts drive your behavior and uh, your behavior reinforces your thoughts and you get into a, a negative feedback loop That's exactly what happens. Right. And it has a lot to do with the way we see the world and our perception of the world. And that's interesting. How do we change that? That's one of the hardest things to change, the way we see the world, reality. I know that religion conversion is one of them. <laughs> like a lot of people have turned to that and they change their personality, the way of thinking and everything changes. But other than that, what are some of the ways that you have? I know you wrote a book about it and you have techniques that can be practiced. But what are other powerful ways that you can think of that can transform the way we think? Gosh, that's, that's a difficult question uh, because, because what I talk about in my book is, is, is what you can do to come to the realization that, that you have a problem. And that's, that's with any addiction, that is the first step. And, and with, with any addiction, the addict is the last person to, to realize that they have a problem. Uh, you know, people can tell you you have a problem and you, you get angry with them. And, no. You know, you, you have to, something has to bring you to the realization that, that if you continue doing this, bad things are going to happen. And, and until you have that realization yourself, uh, There's not a lot that, that other people can do. I mean, you can't, you can't reason with an angry person any, any more than you can reason with an alcoholic or a sex addict or, or um, you know, a smoker. Um, so, so there has to be some, some event. Right. And, and unfortunately, it's, it's, often, it's often a very negative event that, that, that stops you in your tracks 
And, and you realize that if you continue doing this, uh, you, you're just going to do a lot of harm to yourself, more harm to yourself and to other people. And from only from that point, can you, can you begin to use some of these techniques and, and, and climb back, uh, out of, out of the hole that you've dug yourself. Uh, and, and that, that, that realization, uh, uh, unfortunately it's, it's often a very negative event that, that causes you to have that realization. You, you, you can no more tell an anger addict that they have a problem than you can tell an alcoholic they have a problem. Uh, every, everybody with this kind of, everybody with an addiction of any kind, uh, kind of has to hit the wall, uh, before, before they realize, gosh, I've got a problem. Uh, and from that point you, you start to come back. Right. Yeah, Terry, maybe that's what it is. I've got a problem. You realize that by going through some hardships and then you get tired. Like you said, I'm tired of being angry. Well, in, 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 in your book, uh, you, you had that epiphany where, where after, after the, um, uh, the event that you, the competition that you entered and, and, and after that you hit a wall and, and you realized that, that, uh, what you were doing was, and, and it wasn't doing you any good. Uh, no. and, but it was your realization. Yes. <clears throat> nobody, nobody could have told you that. Right. Right. You, you had to hit, you had to hit the wall. Um, yeah. And, and that's, that's how it is. That's, that's the way it is with, with, uh, it's, it's that way with alcoholics, with sex addicts, with smokers, with, uh, any addiction, you have to hit the wall before you, you, you realize that, huh, maybe I have a problem. Uh, and, and from that point on, uh, you, you can start to do something about it. Right. That's true. It doesn't work for everyone. Some people, they just remain on that path. No, yeah, it's no. Kind of interesting. They, a lot of people remain on that path and um, with, with, you know, with very dire consequences. Right. You know? Yeah. That's sad. Yeah. It, it's interesting. It's, it's interesting. What it's, it's kind of interesting what, what makes the difference. Like you could have remained on, on, on your path. You could have continued competing and, been a world champion and, uh, uh, you know, sort of run yourself right into the ground and you could still be doing that today. Um, and, and, and you would be miserable and, and, uh, you know, your relationships would be a disaster and, uh, but you, uh, you'd keep chugging away at it. Um, uh, until, until, you know, something until you died or, or any longer. So, but you had you had that epiphany, you know that that scene on the sidewalk where you kind of talk to your demons. You had that epiphany, um, and and that's what it that's what it takes. I mean, people have an epiphany or they don't, and if they don't, they continue on on the same path uh, with with the predictable consequences. That's right. But you know something interesting is that the reason why I think that happened that. Um, the point of knowing that I had to change, I was going against my own heart, like my own nature. I was living in a city that I didn't want to live, had nothing to do with the things that I believed in. We know what we are supposed to be doing in mm. this lifetime. We know it. A lot of times we just ignore that and do something else, do things that other people want us to do, or societies or whatever it is. That's when I think everything goes wrong. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's so much easier to just keep doing what you're doing, uh, despite despite all the information you're getting that 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 you're not happy. This is not good for you. You'd rather be doing something else. Nature. Uh, it's just so much easier to to keep doing the same thing because it takes it takes rather a, a enormous amount of energy to to change your life, as as you well know. Right. It, it's uh, it just it just it's it's a very big step. Right. I'm not going to do this anymore. Uh, so I was just I'm just wondering if there are people who get it right, you know, since they're from the beginning of their lives, that they just kind of do exactly what they feel it's right to do, you know, in their hearts. 
Have you met anyone like that? Well, I'm trying <laughs> to think. Have I met anyone like that? Yeah, I, um, I think so. That's amazing. They never needed to change anything, right? Well, they, they, they got, somehow, somehow they got on the right path from the start. Yeah. And, and, um, and once you're on, once, once you find your right path, um, then it's, it's not likely, it's, it's not likely that you're going to be, uh, seduced away from it. Um, yeah, I think I've met people like that. I'd have, I'd have to think hard. It's, it's uh, they're not common, uh, as, as you probably know, but it's what we're all looking for, right? It's, it's what, it's what, it's what everybody wants. And then we get trapped in life's experiences and, uh, you know, we get a job and, well, we can't quit the job because we've got the mortgage payments. And, you know, you just, you just, it's so much easier, even though it's so painful, it's so much easier to keep doing what you're doing than it is to make a change. It takes enormous energy, as you know, to, to, to make that kind yes, of change. That's right. You said something that's so, so true. It's just that most people, they don't want to put the energy yeah, into changing and transforming. It takes courage, right? That's true. It's, it's pretty frightening. It's very frightening to do that. It's very scary to do that. Uh, courage or, 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 or a touch of insanity, I'm not sure which. <laughs> yes. <Hey. laughs> you know, um, well, I, 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 um, I left, I left Nova Scotia in, uh, 1989. Uh, I, I sold everything I owned and, and I, I flew to Bangkok, um, with, without a job, uh, because I, I had decided that I, I wanted to see some of the world before it got totally homogenized by globalization. All, all my friends thought I had gone totally insane. And, and maybe, maybe I had, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe you need to be a little insane, uh, to, to, to follow your own yeah. path. I'm just kind of wondering here, the anger could serve the purpose of self-improvement. Every time we are about to get angry or get angry, it is a sign that there's something about us that we need to change or work on. So it might be a good way of acquiring more self-knowledge. Like I don't get angry, right? But I get sometimes frustrated. Yeah, that. And then even when I get frustrated, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I have to change something. See, that's something about me that needs to be changed. Why am I not accepting reality the way it is? If I can't change something, then it's wise to just accept it. Right. Practice acceptance. Right. So I always go back to gratitude and acceptance when there's any kind of negative emotion. What is the difference between anger and rage? Okay, rage is, rage is the, the inbuilt uh, evolutionary wiring uh, that, that helped us survive years of evolution. Rage is a primary, uh, a primary emotion uh, designed to, to keep us alive. So, so in a life or death situation, you know, the infamous saber toothed tiger is staring you in the face. You have three choices that will save your life. You can freeze and hope that, that the, the threat doesn't notice you and passes by. You can flee, uh, you know, run, run as fast as you can, climb a tree, whatever. Uh, and hope you get up there before something grabs you, or you can fight. Now, fight is the choice of last resort, because because uh, no matter whether you win or lose, you're going to be damaged in in a fight, um, and, and that has serious consequences. So this is this is a very very old mammalian response that we share with every other mammal. Um, uh, and and it was designed to keep us alive uh, in where where there were life and death threats. Uh, on top of that, now in modern society, designed to to help us control those fundamental uh, emotions, channel them. 
uh, unless you're unless you're living in unless you're part of an inner city street gang or living in a um, uh, um, a prison population you know, the the hardest core criminals you don't need that response most of the time um, you you uh, and and anger anger is uh, it stems from that all right so uh, you know you're you're in the supermarket and uh, somebody bumps into your shopping cart with their shopping cart it's not a life threatening situation that okay but but you you respond as if it was and so you you know you unload on this person and you bang their cart back in return uh, and you're allowing you're allowing your your ancient rage response to to bubble up and and in a situation where uh, it's it's totally un, you know unnecessary it's it's not required right but the 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 initial the initial spark is always going to be there i mean this is this is this is ancient evolutionary wiring in the limbic system it's with the oldest part of our brain it's always going to be there uh, and and one of the functions one of the functions of civilization is is to modify those those um, those primal basic instincts that we have uh, so so that's why i say that's why i say you know, the goal is not to control your anger. The goal is to eliminate your anger, right? Because there are very in, in modern society where where you need the rage response. Okay. Uh, the yes, uh, if you're if you're um, if you're walking down the street in a bad part of town late at night and and you think you're being followed, smart move would be to walk a little faster and get the heck out of there. Uh, that would that would be a smart response. Uh, turning around and and um, having a rage response to your uh, presumed attackers would be a really dumb move, um, because you know uh, there's just more of them you're going to lose. So so that's that. Do you believe in this kind of wisdom that could be found through negative emotions like anger? Well, uh, you're a very wise person to to think that way. I, I want to be like you. Well, I'm just I'm just practicing. Believe me, Terry, it's a practice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> practice. yeah, yeah. Well, well, it was. Yeah, yeah. It it um, uh, it was it was my anger that led me in this direction. I mean, I got to a point. <clears throat> I got to a point where I, I even I could see that if I continued doing this, uh, it was going to cause me serious problems. You know, I'm going air, going through airport security. I was going to be, you know, dragged off to the windowless room, um, uh, missed my flight, left uh, on the sidewalk, uh, ranting like a maniac. Um, you know, I could I could see that that that, you know, I just I had to stop doing this uh, because because even I could see the harm it was doing me. And, and, and then I started on, on this path, the, the one that you have just described. And, and that is the ideal. You know, there's so many things in, in day-to-day -day life that, that will frustrate you, uh, that, that annoy you. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a constant barrage of, of, of things that, uh, things and people that are frustrating and annoying. Um, and you just, oh my to, God, you Terry, just I love relationships because of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can learn, right? Yeah, 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 the more right. opportunity to uh, change in, in self-improvement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, so yes, that's exactly what, what, um, what I, what I, the realization I came to was that, was that every frustration, every annoyance was an opportunity to to solve a problem or or to just just walk away from it you know i mean if 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 the uh if the the checkout uh, clerk at the supermarket uh um is um you know slow or gives me the wrong change or or doesn't respond to my my um my chatty banter uh well you know walk away from it it's not it's not it's not a life threatening situation it's not a big deal just let it go um it takes practice as you know as you know and another thing that perhaps like not taking things personally right as often or maybe never 
<laughs> it's tough. It's a tough practice, but it's a good one. Ah, uh, 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 yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, why don't people do what they should do? You know, why, 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 why do they do what they shouldn't do? Uh, that's, that's what, what anger is all about should and should not. People should do this and they shouldn't do that. And the weather should be faster and people shouldn't cut me off in traffic. And um, that, that's one of the key things in the book. Uh, the, uh, it's just like once you, once, you, once you realize that you are should and shouldn't in the world, uh, then, then you're halfway home. Um, uh, what I do, what I, the, the, what I describe in the book is the should game. Okay. So, so, so you're, sta you're standing in line, you're standing in line and, and you, you know, you're getting frustrated, right? You're at the supermarket or the bank or some security and, and, and it's going really slow and you're starting to get frustrated and, you know, you can feel, you can feel the anger bubbling up and you want to do something, say something. So you play the, you play the should game, you play the should game and you start, you start imagining the most ridiculous shoulds that you, that you think of, like, you know, oh, they should have, they should have potted plants here. They should have foldable hair for people. They should, they should have, uh, uh, you know, there should be, you should be able to get foam fenders. Uh, <laughs> The more ridiculous you can make it, the more ridiculous you can make it, the better is that you're, you're, you're occupying your brain because you can't, you can't stop should and shouldn't. You can't stop it. You can't say, oh, I shouldn't be saying should. I shouldn't, I should, I shouldn't be saying that. Right? So you go with it. You take it to the other extreme. And, and, uh, and, and your, your brain is so busy thinking of ridiculous shoulds and shouldn'ts that, that, uh, that, that you just, it, it, it cuts off completely the, the anger response. Um, it's actually a technique that I, that I learned from, uh, Eric Fromm, you know, Eric Fromm. I don't know. The, no. The no, I don't know about oh, him. The okay. paradoxical intention, right? Ma method. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I never yeah, heard yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, no. yeah. The first time in your book. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, got it. And, uh, and it works like a treat. It works a treat. It really does. I mean, I, I just use it all the time, you know, I'm, I'm, um, you know, waiting to be served at, at the coffee shop and it's really slow. Uh, and, and I can, I can feel, you know, the old, uh, the old ang wanting to bubble up. And then I just start, you yeah, know, well, you know, they should have posters of old movie stuff here. They should have, uh, black and white tiles on the floor. Any, anything, anything. Oh, it, it, it's, it's, it's the, the main technique for for getting a grip on on your anger that makes sense and the other one i know you talk about breathing right that's can you explain to us how is the breathing technique done well that's some that's something that's something you would know a lot about with uh with your background in in um in sports and fitness um the 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 typical wisdom is you know oh you're getting angry you should uh, take a deep you know take a deep breath and count to 10 doesn't 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 work doesn't work because because your 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 old limbic system wiring has already started the process of of uh, preparing you for fight or flight it takes about a quarter of a second uh for for signals to get to the adrenal glands to start releasing cortisol so that doesn't work it's too late so so what you have to do <clears throat> you have to practice the breathing uh, basically, you have to create a, a conditioned stimulus, and you have to do that when you're not angry, right? So, so um, uh, in a in in a calm situation, in a quiet situation, uh, when you're feeling relaxed, you put the tip of your tongue behind your front back front teeth, right? And and you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, and in through your nose and out through your mouth as long as you can. And then in, in a situation that triggers your anger response, the instant you put your tongue at the back of your front teeth, you the condition of stimulus. And, and, uh, and that brings back the, the feeling of calm. And that's all you need. It takes, it takes about a quarter of a second uh, 
uh, for for the signals from your amygdala to reach your uh, adrenal glands, and and you've got that quarter of a second, 250 milliseconds to 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 cut it off, and and the instant you put your tongue behind your teeth, that's what happens because you're triggering now you're triggering the calm response that you have conditioned yourself in situations of calm. Um, and, and I, I do it every day. There's a, there's a, there's a small lake, I guess you would call it a pond really, uh, in front of my house and I practice my breathing. Um, and, um, it, it works like a charm. Yeah. Um, it makes a lot of sense to me. Do you meditate? Well, uh, the, the breathing, the walking and breathing is, is, is a form of meditation. Uh, I try to meditate, um, so that walking, breathing exercise is a form of meditation. Uh, but yeah, meditation is, is um, uh, any form of meditation would be great. But what you need to do is is create a is create a a condition stimulus, like the the tongue behind the teeth, or or you know holding your fingers in a particular position, or you know it could be anything. You know, tugging on your ear, touching the side of your nose. When you're doing that. So that so that when you the the conditioned stimulus, you initiate the conditioned response, and 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 that shunts that shunts off the anger. Um, what is the advanced anger management changing the dance? Ah ah uh, yeah okay. Um, so a lot of our behavior is is patterns, right? So. Um, you know, I've worked for hours on, on this great presentation, uh, and, and I go to the meeting, and, and I think this is just the greatest presentation that anybody's ever seen. And, and I make my presentation, and then people start picking it apart, and, and, um, and, and I get angry. You know, I put so much effort into this, and, you know, what's the matter with you? How can you be so stupid not to see what's so clear right in front of your nose? And, and, um, and, and that's the dance, Okay. So, so to change the dance, you have to, you have to, and, and you can only do this after you've, you've got a grip on, on your automatic anger response with the, the, the should game and the breathing, right? Once, once you, once you've got a grip on it, then you can start to, to practice this. And so, so you go to the meeting and people start picking apart your, your fantastic, wonderful PowerPoint presentation and, and, and you, you change the dance. Instead of defending every point that people bring up, uh, you know, you 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 just you you write it down and you say that's interesting. Uh, okay, I'll I'll give that some thought, right? And um, and then you go back uh, to your office and and have your little private rant if you like. Uh, and and then you <laughs> <laughs> you're funny. And then and then you and then you sit down. Then you, then you sit down. You know, you do your breathing. You do your breathing. And, you calm down and you sit down and, uh, and you go through the points and you say, uh, that's ridiculous. I'm not going to do that. Uh, well, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe they had a point there. Maybe that could yeah, change. Right. Maybe I could make that better. And, um, and, and, and you've changed the dance instead of, instead of defending with vigor, every point that somebody brings up, which is what people typically do. Uh, you just you just keep your mouth you just keep keep your mouth shut and make notes and say thank you those you know I'm going to go back and think about each and every one of these responses uh, which doesn't which doesn't mean you're going to do anything about all of them um, and and you've changed the dance mm, that's already changing the way we think you're changing the way we think so we can change behavior that's powerful right that you're calling this advanced for a reason <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's it, it's um, it, it's it's the basic principle, really, of cognitive behavior therapy. I mean, earlier, uh, you 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 said something about about uh, you know changing changing your your thoughts, and and that's really cognitive behavior therapy, where you're, it's it's your thoughts that drive your behavior, uh, and your behavior is what initiates responses from other people. Uh, which cause you to to think uh, particular thoughts, which particular ways, and and it's your it's your thoughts that drive all your behavior. So the the only person who can control your thoughts is you. 
right? There, there is no, there is no thought control. And, and you know, this from your own experience, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's like, uh, it, oh, only, yeah. only I can right. decide what I will think about a particular situation. Uh, so if I change the way I think about the situation, uh, if instead of thinking, you know, that, that, that moron that cut me off in traffic ought to, ought to have his car, you know, crushed in a compression machine and, and his toes cut off so he can't reach the gas pedal. Instead of thinking that, you know, I, I could, I could, I could decide, uh, to think a completely different thought, like, Oh yes. Oh yeah. Gosh, I hope he gets where he's going without having an accident or, uh, gosh, I'm, I'm glad he didn't hit my car. Uh, uh, you, yeah. you, you, only you decide what, what you think and, and what you think drives your behavior. It's that simple. Right. One of the things that I, I do, I practice a lot too, it's empathy. I call it compassion too. Like when I, I see that the behavior of other people, that they act in a certain way that's harmful oh, yeah. to me or others, I think that they have suffered more than I did or than most of us did, or mm. they're, they're going through a lot of pain. That's what it is. So that helps a lot too, but it's not really, I don't think it's something that I do as a practice, trying to be nice and good, it's just like I can't do it differently. It's almost like a thought, a pattern of mm. thought that's within me mm -hmm. for some reason. I have been thinking this way since I was very young. And I, that's interesting. I can't change that one. I don't want to change <laughs> that pattern of thinking. Um, it's, it's really interesting because, because given your background, you know, I mean, the first, the first section of your book where you describe your, your childhood, uh, you, you could have, you could have turned out very differently. You could have turned out to be a very angry person. Um, so maybe it's genetic, uh, maybe it's, it's, it's really quite incredible the, the, how small an event can, can point a person in a direction they will follow the rest of their life. So maybe, maybe there, maybe there was some, 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 some event right. you may not even be aware of it that, 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 that just pointed you in this particular direction and, and you were saved all the, the anguish of being an angry woman. Yeah, that's, that's true, Terry. I don't know. Do you believe in God, for example, or any kind of life, reincarnation or mind continuation? Well, you, um, you contacted me because you had you, you had read my review of Marcus Aurelius, uh, Stoic, right? Yes. And um, uh, that's that's the kind of I, I, I okay yeah I guess I, I'm a spiritual person I believe in spirituality but <clears throat> I I believe what uh, what Marcus Aurelius said that. Um, uh, when, when you die, you are received back into the creative principle of the universe. And, and, uh, that's enough for me, right? That, that, that does it for me. Um, uh, I, I, I know people who, who believe in a, a more personified God and, and it works for them. Um, and I mean, okay, good. That's, that's fine. But for me, the creative principle of the universe is good enough for me, you know, and, and no, I don't think, I don't, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a, I don't think my personality, uh, will continue to exist. Um, but, but I, I, I will, you know, I, I believe in the con content, the continuity of the creative principle of the universe. And, and so I just become part of that again. Right. Good enough for me. Whatever that is. Right? Whatever, whatever that is. Right. Uh, yeah, I had forgotten about the, how, the way we connected because I normally send invitations to a lot of people and I don't read all the reviews. And I have a team who does it for me too. Are you? No, I don't believe. Um, no, no, not in the, in the personal God, not in, I don't know. It's just I know, but I don't know. And I can't really talk about it. The idea of reincarnation. Mind continuation, rebirth, all that. It's just um, sometimes it seems like I know that I've been here before and 
I have met certain people and <laughs> that's kind of strange, but I don't know for sure. Obviously, I don't know for sure. It's just a, a thought. Um, okay, okay. It's an interesting topic. I, I believe that mind, I believe that mind is the emergent property of a complex system. Okay, now what that means is, um, uh, okay, the best way to explain that is an illustration. There's, there's a game I play in, in different situations. Uh, it's called a bubble sort, okay? It's, it's actually a mathematical algorithm. You take, uh, you take a group of people, any group of people, you can do this in your studio, okay? You get a group of people, and, and each person set of very simple rules. Each person can only ask one question. They can only ask the question to the person on their right, okay? And the question is, the, the question is are you taller than me, okay? And, and if the answer is yes, you stay where you are. And if the answer is no, you change places, okay? Yeah. You got it? Yes. Okay, so I'm, I'm standing here, and I, I, I turn to my right. You're on my right. And I say, are you taller than me? And, uh, and, and you say, uh, no. So we change places. Okay. And then I ask the person, the new person on my right, are you taller than me? No. So we change places. Uh, and then we, you know, there's a new person on my right. Are you taller than me? And, and after what will happen is, is very, very quickly, uh, you will have a line of people sorted from shortest to tallest. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, where did where did the where did the where did that come from? All right, where did the where did the shortest and tallest come from? Well, it was you know you, you, it was an emergent property of a complex system. Right, each person had had a very simple set of rules. Uh, they could ask one question only to the person on their right. There was a, a one response for yes, one response for no, and and from that emerged uh, uh, an order a level higher than than the questions people were asking right, you get what i mean no i understood uh, yeah, the order so the system was created with the simple question but then you see that there was an and in the end we have an order right. because of a simple right. actually question and uh, right. idea yeah it, we have a we have a higher level of order from a very simple set of questions and and that's how i think of consciousness i think consciousness is an emergent property of a complex system which is the brain uh, the brain is, is there are as many neurons in the brain as there are stars in the Milky Way galaxy, a hundred billion. And, and that's amazing. Right. right. One of those neurons, each neuron in your brain is, is may have anywhere from, from up to 5,000 connections with other neurons, which means there are, uh, uh, potentially 10, 10 trillion connections possible inside your head. Okay, that's a that's a pretty complex system, right? And and uh, and I think I think consciousness is an emergent property of that system, and and that basically we we project um, um, we project our we project a, basically a, a, an hallucination onto the world. You know, everything I everything I see, I make up in my in my head. Right. Right enough spiritual for me <laughs> right there so the the ultimate question is what is real what is reality what is the ultimate reality and what is real exactly no one knows right uh, i i believe there's a physical reality i believe in physics um uh i i don't care i don't care what you believe if you stick your hand in a flame you're going to burn uh Right, so I, I believe I, I believe in physics. Yeah, that's real. I believe in physics. I believe in a physical reality. Uh, I believe in gravity. I believe in in uh, uh, pi, Planck's constant, uh, the speed of light. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> and and that's what real. we do as, <laughs> yeah. as humans with brain, <clears throat> we we project uh, a picture uh, onto that reality, and and. Uh, you know, if our picture is accurate, then we, we don't bump into things or walk off ledges um, uh, or, or, or attack imaginary friends, uh, whatever. Um, uh, and, and that's how we navigate around the world. So we, we project a picture of what we believe to be out there. Uh, and that's why, that's why um, 
our kids. That's why. That's why your book is 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 so found. Is is what what you're saying in your book is is basically that. Is is that is that um, you know you you can you can think one way and and reap these kinds of consequences, or you can think a different way and reap different consequences. Yeah. Um, so. What is love? What do you think? What's your definition of love? Wow. <laughs> well, uh, it's a tough question. For me, I think for me, love comes down to uh, loyalty. That um, uh, I have a friend who um, married a woman uh, because she was pregnant and her family would have been um, very, very upset. Uh, if she had had a child out of wedlock, uh, the child the child was um, uh, born severely autistic, and uh, and then they separated shortly thereafter. Her ch choice, she moved back to the family, uh, and he continues to to support that child. He continues to visit that child. Uh, he continues to spend time with that child. Uh, to me, to me, that 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 kind of loyalty. Uh, is love, uh, and and uh, you know I've seen that uh, the friends I value the most are are the friends who display that kind of loyalty to to uh, ex spouses or or uh, children or or you know people who've helped them or whatever. Have you experienced love in this sense of loyalty yourself? Uh, I'm learning. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm learning. Yeah. Uh, I've been married to my wife for, uh, I think about 28 years now. And, um, you know, it's, 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 the, it hasn't, there have been times when, when I, uh, didn't want to be married. There were times, uh, you know, been rough patches. Um, But um, uh, I think now I love her more than um, more than ever. Uh, you know. So you talk about the fourth anger management technique, and that is challenging assumptions. Uh, please talk to me a little bit about that one. Right. Right. Uh, okay. Partly it goes back to 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 should. Okay. Should should is the root. The real root of, of most anger. Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, let me see if I can think of a recent example. Um, yeah, I was in a in the supermarket. Uh, uh, you know that 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 checkout clerk should be should be working faster than she is. Well, well, why should she? You know, why 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 should she be working faster than she should? Um, Uh, you know the uh, the people who who just sent me a contract. Their contract is is an absolute disaster. They should uh, revise their contracts, you know, to make them more up to date. Well, why should they? You know, what what makes you know wh why should they do that? Um, so, you know, everybody behaves. Everybody has a very good reason for behaving the way they do. Uh, regardless of how, how annoying it might be to me. <laughs> uh, so, so um, you know, challenging assumptions is, is like, like, you know, why, why should they behave any, why, why should they behave any differently just That's because right. yeah. I think they should. Mm, right, because you want them to, yeah, to be different. Right. Yeah. So it goes back to right, right, acceptance, right, exactly. yeah, accepting yeah. reality, others the way, just the way they are, the way things are and the way people are. It's very important when we can't, cannot change, right? Pretty much. So um, some of the things that you wrote in your book that I really liked, I was kind of, oh, this is great. Something like um, you said, be friendly, be open. If the other person doesn't respond, let it go. So going back to what we're just saying about acceptance, really powerful practice. Then you also said something uh, along yeah. the lines. It is not about breaking the bad habit yeah. as much as it is about creating new healthy ones. Yeah. But you said it differently in your book. 
And you also said something like, a frustration is a problem asking to be solved. Mm. Yeah. Well, you you touched on that earlier in our discussion when when uh, uh, when you were talking about frustration. That's that seems to be your approach to frustration. Uh, it's like, well, working. How can I make it work? Yeah. So I want to ask you this question before. Um, do you want to say anything else, Terry, about the topic of anger in your book or? something that you might know today that was not written in the book? Um, I guess I would, yeah, I would, I guess I would just say that, that the last person, it's like any form of addiction, the last person to realize they have a problem is the person with the problem. So you, you can't, you can't go to an angry person and say, Hey, you have a problem with anger. You need to fix it. Uh, they'll just get it. They'll just get angry. Um, and, and as with any form of addiction, you, you really have to hit the wall or, or hit rock bottom, uh, before you realize that, hmm, Hey, this isn't working for me, uh, before you start to, to do some, uh, if, if, uh, any listeners are at that point in their life, you know, like, oh, I'm just sick and tired of being angry all the time. You know, I wish I didn't have to do this or, or like me, uh, you know, realize that, that, if, if I keep doing this, um, the next, you know, one of these days I go through airport security, uh, I'm going to get taken to the little windowless room for the body cavity search. Uh, and, and that's not going to be fun. Um, and, uh, you, you have to, you have to come to the real life like you did in, in fit for joy, where you describe, you know, your, your epiphany, uh, after the competition realize that that uh, hey this isn't working for me mm -hmm. i have to do yes. something different and everybody has to come to that point on their own you can maybe nudge people in the direction but but basically everybody has to come to it on their own yeah and they need to do the work yeah, of changing the way they think that's right so yeah. um, coming to my my yeah. final questions yeah. to you yeah. um some of them are my favorites to ask um, yeah. How do we become our own best friend, in your opinion? Uh, yeah, tough question. I'm working on that one. Um, well, um, we have to. Okay, I, I I have had to forgive myself for a lot of the mistakes that I've made, and there have been so many. Uh, I have to forgive myself that 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 uh, I I was a less aware person. Um, you know, I, I, I wasn't ready, whatever the cause, uh, I cannot change what happened. Uh, I can only forgive myself and, and hope that, that other people, uh, who, who I damaged, uh, will, will perhaps someday forgive me. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And, uh, that I, I'm, it's a cliche, but, uh, I need not be a prisoner of my past, uh, that, that I may have been like that one way and, and I'm now trying to be a different way uh, and that I, I cannot allow uh, the past to, to hold me prisoner or I, I will never make any progress. Uh, that, that's about yeah, it. Yeah, I like that. Um, describe life in one word. Exploration. Mm, right. What is your definition of success? Doing what you want, uh, doing what you want that uh, is of some benefit to other people, uh, while at the same time keeping a, a roof over your head and food on the table. What is to be strong? Fall down eight, get up nine. That's, that's it's an old Japanese proverb. Right, I like that too. What is to be true to yourself? Uh, to be, to be constantly questioning your own motivations and, you know, why, why am I really doing this? Uh, is this, is this a good reason to be doing this? You know, is this, is this serving a good purpose for me and, and people around me? And, 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 uh, am I happy doing this? You know, is this, is this making me, is this making me feel do I feel like I'm doing something meaningful? That's Those are, the big yeah, one. Great questions. If you knew you would die soon, what would you change about your life or yourself? Um, well, I, I kind of feel 
I kind of feel working on that now. Oh, yeah, one of my favorite lines, I forget somebody famous, um, dream as if you will live forever. Uh, dream as if you will live forever. Yeah, dream as if you will live forever. Live as if you might die tomorrow. Yeah, that's a great quote, right? So, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I just, I mean, I'm just working on it every day, like you. You know, I'm just every day. You know, find meaningful things to do and um, not do a lot of harm, any harm, little harm as possible. Right, right. Yeah. You know. What are three things about life you know for sure? <laughs> for sure. I have to emphasize that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, for sure. For sure. So one, everything changes. Right. Change. Uh, everything sort of the corollary to that is that everything you love either leaves you or you leave it eventually. That, uh, that um, you, you can only, only you can decide what to think uh only you only you can decide how you're going to respond to a situation nobody controls uh how you decide to respond to to any given situation a kindness uh, an unkindness uh, uh whatever so true and i don't know i think that kind of exhausts my pool of wisdom for the moment <laughs> <laughs> you know what you know a lot <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, you want to see the scars? Yeah. <laughs> that was not easy, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, you, you, you have your own scars, so you, you know. I mean, uh, your journey, um, there was a lot of pain in your journey, and, and you, you lived through that pain, and, and there will be more pain to come. Uh, we, we never know. Um, but, but you, you, you have endured. And I guess that would be the third thing you, you have to endure the pain. Um, I think the, the main problem is that we resist the pain. We just push, we try not to feel it. I don't want it. And that's, I think that's the main, that's why we have even more problems. So yeah. I've learned to accept all the pain that I, I still have them, but I can't change it. I So I just embrace them as me. Okay, you're going to become part of my yes. heart, part of me. And it has been, I mean, wonderful. It's just, um, it's interesting. Once you accept it, everything changes, everything. It, it, it hurts less or it doesn't, actually it doesn't hurt anymore. It's just, I know it's there, but it doesn't yes. really, it doesn't um, manifest. It doesn't become part of my reality. That's doesn't fantastic. get in the way. No, it doesn't. No, of my joy, of my yeah. And and what most what most people what most what so many people are doing is they're avoiding the pain, they're ignoring the pain, resisting the pain. You know, I don't want the pain. Uh, I don't have. I don't want. I'm not going to think about the pain. And and that's that's a big a big reason that that so many people stay stuck in in a semi semi-painful state because the more you deny the pain uh the more it festers and and it just it doesn't go away now it needs to be expressed it will find a way of expressing itself yeah because this is energy right everything's yeah. energy yeah. you don't exactly. push away energy um yeah it has been um fun meaningful fun <laughs> Yeah. Where can we find more information about you, your books, future projects? Uh, the book is on Amazon. Uh, so if you just go to Amazon and um, search for for uh, Free Yourself from Anger, a Do-It-Yourself Manual, uh, you, you will find it. It's available as an e-book and, uh, and I'm working on uh, having it uh, available in print form as well. Um, my website, www.terryearl.com, E-R-L-E. Um, but that's, uh, you can look at that. Uh, uh, current projects, um, uh, I'm working with, uh, with a partner to develop a, a series of online writing courses. Uh, you do a writing course. You do the memoirs course. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that's my, that's what's taking up most of my time right now is, um, Uh, developing online writing courses. Uh, nothing, nothing uh, fancy, exciting, not fiction. 
uh, not journalism. It's it's sort of bread and butter writing business and professions. Um, uh, and that's that's basically what I'm working on these days. Great. Sounds really great. Um, thank you so much again, Terry. Bye for now. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. You bet. Bye. Okay, bye for now. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Terry Earl Clayton, please visit his website, terryearl.com. That is Terry, E-R-L-E dot com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. I want to thank the Patreon members, Lawrence McGrath, Mark Basden, Terry Clayton, and Aidan Vickrock. Thank you again for listening, and bye for now.